Hey, come here. I'm really excited about this one. I'm going to be sharing with you my first ever boring vanilla buy to let investment. Don't be too excited. I lost £60,000. Let me set the scene for you. So I was back at university here and uh, uni, from my experience, was basically fuck around for ages. And then you get to the stage where you're like a month away from exams and then you suddenly work hard and tell you how everyone how hard uni is, right? Um, and on the days, I used to watch Homes <laughs> Under the Hammer. And back then it was Martin and Lucy that did it. It was on 10 a.m., I think. Uh, most days, pretty much every day. And I'd watch these people go around and they would ignore Martin and Lucy's advice. And bear in mind, Martin and Lucy for me were like the god and goddess of the property world. Why would you ever ignore their advice? And their advice was ignored all the time and they still made bloody money. I thought if these idiots can do it, then I can too. And at that time, I was hustling. I mean, like working three jobs. I worked at B&Q and then I worked on a farm overnight. So 9 p.m. till 6 a.m. I worked on a farm, uh, Watts Farm in Orpington, if any of you know that from down south. And I was hustling, 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 building money, working cash in hand, etc. Saved up all this cash. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to buy property. Now, the thing is... I couldn't get a mortgage. I was still a student, and this was back in 2010, 2011, something like that. And mortgages weren't exactly getting dished out. And I ended up talking to one of my lecturers who happened to invest in property. Great guy. And he ended up investing in Burnley, and he had like 40 properties in the Northwest. And he was like, yeah, they're only X amount of money. I was like, what? That's crazy. So anyway, I went up there, and uh, Burnley is... Uh, a delightful little town if you're from there. And if you're not from there, it's a complete shithole. OK, and uh, it's a pretty cheap place. And I end up finding a property, number 36 Burdett Street, for £21,800. And I'd managed to save up about 19 grand. As I said, I was hustling. So I beg borrowed and stole, I didn't steal, from people to top this up, 21800 bought the property to find out I had fuck all money, right? Absolutely no money whatsoever. And so I then started hustling, getting paid cash in hand, Monday to Friday, still at uni. Then my, my best friend's dad bought me this rickety old van, right? And absolutely love him for it. White Betty, we called her, if uh, Black Betty, the song, but White Betty. Anyway, white van. And I used to drive it up Friday night, sleep in the back of the van, had a tour box, and I did the property up myself. So I did absolutely everything, uh, put the, uh, the plumbing in. One thing my dad taught me is how to hang a radiator in 10 minutes. <coughs> Cheers, dad. Um, and then did all of it, wired up everything. The only things I didn't do is the kitchen, because I didn't have a clue. The plastering, because I'm shit at it and still am to this day. Didn't wire it up to the box, because I'm not qualified electrician. And I couldn't move the gas. So anyway, I meet the next door neighbor, Steve. Steve Ash, if you're watching this. Fuck you. You'll find out why. I'm not just mean for the reason. So, I meet Steve. He's next door. Safe pair of hands, right? Turns out he knows how to fit a kitchen. Who knew? And he's a plasterer. What a great day to be alive. And I'm in year three now of uni, and this has been nine months of back and forth. Really hard stuff, right? But it's good to learn before you earn. Well, that's what I keep telling myself. And um, Steve was there. He's like, mate, you, you focus on your exams, year three, all of that. I'll get this done for you. I'll get the kitchen done, all of that. I'm thinking, amazing, this is great. So uh, naturally, I pay Steve up front in cash. Now, again, saying that out loud, you might think, you bloody idiot, Jamie. But the truth is, I didn't know what I didn't know. I got brought up on a certain level of integrity that your word was your bond which seems to have gone out the window nowadays, right? So your words, your bond, you said you're going to do something, you're going to crack on. I thought, this is, this is bliss. I get to stay next door. Everything's good. Sorry, uh, get on with my uni. It's all good. He's next door. Anyway, four weeks go past. Start the study period for my final exams. Um, what's going on? Not heard back. You said you'd have it done by now. Sorry, mate. Slight delays on X, Y, Z. Listen, it will be done by the end of next month. And I'm like, OK, well, that's not a big deal because I've got my exams to focus on. I went, no stress, mate. I'll chat to you after. thought, right, focus on the exams, all of that. Get them done. Still not heard anything. So I message him again. And he's like, sorry, mate. Uh, not got back. Two more weeks. I'll be done. All right, amazing. Two weeks go by. I message him. No response. I message him. No response. I message him. No response. And you're like, oh, that feeling at the pit of your stomach. And so I end up driving up 240 miles. 240 miles from London, and as I pull up, I'm like, okay, looks okay from the outside. 
And you know when you open something and you can feel it before you even do something? So I open the door and it's like this, like this wet air and you're like, something doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right. And I go in and the radiators are not there. They've been ripped off the wall. The wires have been pulled out. The carpet, which was rolled up in the corner, that had been, that's gone. Uh, the kitchen was not installed. The plastering was not done. My toolbox was stolen. They left my sleeping bag. Thank you for doing that, by the way, because I desperately needed it. And my toolbox was gone. Fuckers, right? Everything was gone. And by the way, the kitchen was dug up. It's like, what? And I remember talking to somebody after. They went, yeah, there's lead in the flooring in a lot of the kitchens around here. I thought, fucking hell, have it. Like, if your life is that desperate. But anyway, you think, what the fuck this all for? And you might be laughing, by the way. Bear in mind, this was every penny that I had. I can laugh about it now. So I knocked next door, and I'm banging on. These are like the two bed back-to-backs. I'm like, Steve, Steve, what the fuck's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And I look up, and uh, think of like your grandma's house with the netting. It was kind of like that, right? And I can see the netting moving. And I'm like, Steve, I can fucking see you, man. What's going on? I'm banging on. No word of a lie. No word of a lie. I go like this against the window and I'm in the back to back, right? And I can see my kitchen installed in his house. He's done a fucking good job, to be fair. <laughs> so, but seriously, hopefully you're laughing. Let me know in the comments. But bear in mind, like, imagine this was every penny. I had to borrow from people. I had to get credit cards to do the refurb. I had to get loans to do this. You might think, oh my God, you smash his head in, right? Honestly, really weird response, because bear in mind, I'm from Dartford, bit of a rough area. If somebody did that, you'd sort them out in a certain way. And I ended up just getting back in my car, in my van, drove to local estate agents, signed up to sell the house and just gave them my keys. And I never went there again. And I don't know if you can relate to this, but have you ever been in a situation where you didn't do anything wrong? Somebody did something to you and it made you doubt yourself. And that was me for the next couple of years, genuinely. And I, I, I feel OK telling this story because I didn't stop. I pushed on. But for two to three years, I did fuck all. Like I got the odd job here and there, recruitment, finance, all these different things. Um, and it fucked with my head. And I don't know, I don't want to say the word depression because I don't think that's fair for people that have actually got that. But maybe you can relate to this. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel angry. I just felt numb, like truly numb. And I made up all these stories. People are out there to fuck you over. Northerners will take advantage of me because I'm a southerner, so they'll charge me more. I'm a kid. Nobody's going to take me seriously. The reality is all of that was not true. One person did something and I made that mean that everyone would do it. And I made it mean something to me. Now, the truth is I've learned since then a bit of stoicism and stoic philosophy is it talks about the controllables and the uncontrollables. I can't control what somebody does. I can't control somebody's words. I can't control somebody's actions, but I can control my emotions. I can control the things that I do about it. And the thing is, it scarred me for a long time. And so it is the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my investment career. And it's the best thing that could have happened to me. It really is. They say buy the worst house in the best street. I bought the worst house in a pretty bad street, 240 miles away. Didn't have a power team didn't know what I was doing, watched Homes Under the Hammer and decided that was my education. Uh, I've since invested about half a million into my education and fully, and not just me, my business partner, my team now, fully expect to invest millions in my education over time. And people think education is uh, expensive. Try the cost of ignorance. That'll really cost you. Now, the irony is back then, property courses, they didn't really talk about mindset a lot. And it's true. So the first course I ever invested in about eight and a half, nine years ago now was actually a mindset course. Then I did a property course. Then I got a mentor and I'd invested £33,000 in credit cards and loans. And you might think that's absolutely crazy, but that's allowed me to start my journey. And now I do multiple millions a year in profit. And I get to do cool things like this. So the reason I wanted to share this story with you is... 
it's a really happy memory for me, despite really uncertain and upsetting circumstances. Now, hear me out on this. If you wanted to be a resilient individual, what would need to happen in your life for you to be resilient? Well, you'd have to be tested in multiple ways. If you wanted to be a patient individual, you'd have to be tested in multiple ways. If you want to be a brave individual, then you have to be surrounded by fear and the opportunity to go forward. In the same way that if you want people to invest in you, then you need to invest in yourself. And ultimately, if you want a life of ease financially, then you need to go through the struggles and testament that most people will never go to. You have to live the life that 99% of people will never give in order to have the life that 99% of people will never have. Now, I love sharing this story. It's a story of woes, it's a story of troubles, it's a story of trusting the wrong people, it's a story of lack in education. All of the things that you don't need to do. If you've been following this channel for a while, I genuinely hope I've been giving you as much value as possible. We've done hundreds of videos to help you build your investment portfolio and 2024 is no different. I am going all in. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure to get in now. You don't want to regret it because 2024 could be your best year yet. I genuinely believe that. And if you want to be a part of that, hit the subscribe and the notification bell. I'd love to see you in future videos. But you know what? There's more. If you're watching this, never mind your first property. What about your 50th? What about your 100th? The only person getting in your way of success is you. If you want to be making 2024 your best year yet, put education in the comments right now. I'm doing something really special right now. And I want to work with people that are serious about backing themselves, investing in themselves, and creating the financial future that you deserve. So what am I doing? I'm putting on some free one-to-one -one strategy sessions. This strategy session is going to work out where you're at, where you want to get to, and if we can help you on that journey. Ultimately, you might think this is crazy. I can help you create a six figure that's 100,000 income in as little as 12 months. And I know that's a big promise, but it's a promise I can deliver and it's a promise that I can guarantee. Now, does it take investing in yourself? Yes, there is investment. You need compliance. You need to set yourself up. But, and in general, that's 3,000 pounds for everything you need to create a six figure business. And if you're serious, and driven, and you want to make 2024 your best year yet, but you're not resourceful enough to get £3,000, whether that's loan, credit card, borrowing from a friend, working your ass off and getting an extra stream of income, then maybe business isn't for you. But if you're watching this and you are genuinely serious about changing your life, I want to be a part of that journey. And I hope you buy into me. I hope you buy into how I can help you. And if you want to take that first step up the mountain, I'll get you the rest of the way. How you can take that first step is put education in the comments right now. I'll put a link in the comments too. I'll pin it to the top. Fill in your details. Let's have a chat one-to-one -one and see if we can help make 2024 your best year yet. As I said, hit subscribe if you want to learn more about property. Hit the notification bell. Destroy that like button. Takes you 10 seconds. Really makes a difference. And I'll see you in the next video.